Hey, what's up? This is Gary from Raz Rentals. And today I'm gonna to take a break from my usual videos of Ghostbuster toys, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Masters of the Universe Origins, and Thundercats, and talk about quite possibly my favorite Batman line of all time. Quite possibly one of my favorite superhero lines of all time. Batman, Legends of the Dark Knight. These guys are huge, and I can barely fit them all into this one shot. Uh, you know, they blew my mind when they came out way back in 1997, and, you know, I'm still in awe how awesome these guys are. Uh, it's very stylized and very 90s, uh, but I love it, you know. I love everything about them. And uh, before I get into a, a closer look here, let's talk about why I like these figures so much. So I'm going to go into a little tangent here and talk for a while. So if you want to uh, skip ahead to, like, the toy reviews, just check out the chapters below in the description, and you can pick whichever figure you want to in Series 1. All right, first up, I got to mention that, uh, you know, this is a very dark take on the Caped Crusader, and I like that a lot. I love those Batman stories where they take place in the future or... You know, it's like Bruce Wayne, but it's some other timeline or something like that. And everything is just turned to crap and it's really dark and gritty. Along with being dark and kind of scary, you'll also notice that uh, Batman here has giant ears. And like all these Batman toys have these very long ears. Remember, it was the 90s and in the 90s, excess was very popular. So if Batman was going to have ears, they were going to be five foot long ears. And, uh, you know, this is like sort of controversial, you know, uh, some people like this look, some people hate this look. I love this look, you know? When I was a kid, I used to draw comic books and uh, I used to try to steal this style all the time. And I mostly attribute this style to uh, a few people, but mostly I attribute it to Kelly Jones. That I'm aware of, the earliest Kelly Jones Batman art is from 1991 when he did uh, Batman uh, well, it was Dark Rain, but this is the Batman Vampire Collection, because eventually there were three bits of this. And look, it's very gothic, it's very dark, and of course Batman has these gigantic ears. Um, I love this style a lot, I think it's really cool. And, uh, but I actually don't necessarily... I didn't know about him from this first, because I didn't read this first. Originally I saw Kelly Jones... As the cover artist for the uh, the Nightfall miniseries, I mean, these covers were awesome. He didn't do them all, you know, a couple were done by Sam Keith, but, you know, I just loved his style. It was very different from the artwork inside, and I do love, you know, a lot of the artwork inside, like Norm Brayfogle was probably my favorite Batman artist of all time. But the covers of these is just like, I don't know, it's just so expressive and just so unusual or something. Like, the, the anatomy is awesome, but it is, it's also, like, completely extreme. Some of them are very gruesome and scary, like, you know, creepy looking. Like, when I was collecting these, I was around maybe uh, uh, 10 to 11. And, you know, I just I just love these. I thought they were great. Um, I, I would stare at them for hours upon hours. And, like, you know, it's not, like I said, it's not, like, super realistic, but there's something about it that looks more realistic than usual comic book art. I don't know if it's, like, because it's... Uh, I don't know, the way he draws is very 3D, even though it's like stylized, it's very 3D. And then, you know, like I said, some of these are very violent. Like I remember I wanted to hang a bunch of these up on my wall when I was a kid, but you know, you'd get to like uh, part 16 here where the, this Batman is hitting this dude in the face with a spiked piece of wood. And you're like, I don't know if my parents would appreciate me showing that to my little brothers. I also attribute this style or maybe the, uh, the popularity of the style to also Simon Bisley. I mean, look at how Batman looks here. This is from 1991 too. And this this book is like one of the coolest Batman comics in existence. This is one of my favorites. And uh, you know, Batman here is very stylized and he has these giant ears. I'll try to show you that here. Um, and you know, it, I'll, I'll give you a little hint here. Like if you look at the way his brow is shaped on this cowl and everything like that, if you want like a perfect toy of Simon Bisley Batman. Um, in my opinion, the best is probably this, uh, this NECA Batman versus Alien Batman. I mean, the way that his, his face is shaped and everything looks so much like Batman in this comic. It's great. So I recommend picking this up if you haven't found it. I mean, like it's people laugh about this look and people don't like it, whatever. Um, but you know, this was popular at the time. Like Kelly Jones even took over penciling the inside of Batman for a, a long time. He began in February 95 in issue 515 
And, you know, he just kept on penciling them all the way up until, I think, 542, which is pretty far in the line. And I just loved his expressive, super bulky characters. Like, all of his villains looked menacing and, you know, just extreme. Like, look at this Mr. Freeze. Like, I would love a toy of this, but unfortunately, you know, none was ever produced in the, the Legends of the Dark Knight line. Um, but yeah, this gothic look was, you know, it was popular back then. Let's see, when was... Uh, no, I lied. My comic books are out of order. He at least went into almost f maybe 551 or something like that, not 542, which is uh, into 1998. And it wasn't just Kelly Jones and Simon Bisley either. You also had this very cool Batman Master Series card set. And a lot of these are drawn by uh, Dermot Power. And I don't really know much about him, but like if you look at these paintings of Batman, that cow, that cow matches this cow perfectly. Like all the, the lines, the shape of it, the cutouts for the eyes and the mouth. Like obviously, I th I'm, I would place money that he painted this. And uh, you know, you, like I said, a lot of people don't like it now, but back then, you know, I think people liked it a lot. It wasn't just the uh, the comic book art either. Like there was this very cool progression of quality or, you know, just change in style in Batman toys uh, until we got to Legends of the Dark Knight when Legends of the Dark Knight was completely different than anything you saw before. So like in 1989, you had, of course, the original Batman toy. And uh, then after that, well, before that you had Super Friends, but you know, I'm uh, this was the first Batman I had. So in 89, I had this Batman. And then in 91, you got all these cool different Batman Returns figures. And then in 93, I think, you started getting all these Batman animated series figures. And, you know, these are all very cool, but they're also kind of stiff. They all kind of stand straight up. And most of the times, if you had um, variants in the line, it would be like just the same Batman toy over and over again with different colors and just different accessories, and they'd be like, oh, this is Tech Batman, this is, you know, Arctic, uh, Arctic Shield Batman, or whatever it's called. And, you know, I loved all that, I liked it all, it all made sense, but, you know, it was, it was very repetitive. Then in 1994, something uh, pretty interesting happened, and kind of crazy. Uh, Kenner decided to start making the Batman toys, uh, like, to mold them more in action poses, more like uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So, you know, your, your action would be a little limited with these guys, but just standing there, they looked amazing. Like, you know, they weren't very stiff. They actually looked like they were ready for battle. And I love these. I thought these were great. I thought these were an awesome step up from those toys. For one thing, they were bigger. You know, like, if you look at Batman Returns Batman here next to these guys, they're a lot bulkier. And, I don't know, they just look very cool. Very spontaneous, you know. Very lifelike. Or, um, full of life, right? And, um... And they, become, they became way more detailed, too. There was a lot more detail on these guys. And, you know, it all made sense to me. Like, more so than Spider-Man or X-Men or anything like that. I always seem like... I guess maybe because it's kind of like an Iron Man thing. Where you think that Batman is developing all these gadgets and new technologies to take on his villains. So, like, why wouldn't Batman have a bunch of different outfits? And, like, you know, the whole purpose of Legends of Batman, this line from 1994 into 1996, was to show Batman through different timelines and stuff like that. And that was never really important to me because I just imagined that this was regular Bruce Wayne Batman in different uniforms. Or, you know, this was Azrael and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it, it was very cool and it was, it was a really awesome step up. And in 1995, when you had Batman Forever come out, came out, uh, you know, they had a whole line for that. And they kind of kept a lot of that detail, but the, the general sculpt of the characters became maybe a little more stiff again. Some of them were in action poses. Uh, and some of them, like I said, you know, I, like, I love this thing. I thought this was awesome. Like, this made perfect sense to me as a kid. Like, yeah, you want Batman in, uh, you know, aqua gear, or I can't remember what this is called, with, like, this very cool color scheme and all this awesome detail. And then, uh, a year later, or maybe a little longer than that, because I'm unsure if it's, uh, if they came out in late 96 or early 97, it doesn't, I guess it doesn't really matter, but Toy Fair Magazine always lists as, as a 97, but the, uh, the back of all these cards says 96, and, um, let's see here, so, like, you had, uh, finally, these came out, and these were, like, like a jump 
from everything else that came before it. Like it's very stylized. Uh, it, it, it looks like it's almost filled with even more life than the other characters. And, you know, they were just filled with a ton of detail. I think the, the biggest reason why you had this shift too in style is obviously because of the Spawn toys at the time. You know, Spawn toys were very popular and they were gigantic. Like if you had this Batman and you're getting this Spawn toy uh, roughly around the same time, like look how bigger he is, more detailed he is. Like, you know, this was crazy. Putting this guy up to like even your, you know, your Batman returns action figure from just a couple of years before that so obviously kenner saw this and thought no we have to compete with that and i will tell you this there are some positives that these kenner batman figures have over the spawn figures for one uh you know none of these batman toys are rotocast which means you know they're not hollow inside all these a lot of these early spawn toys uh especially the big bulky ones they're hollow inside and uh, another thing is that they're very sturdy I don't know about you, but like the majority of the spawn toys I ever had as a kid, they always broke. I remember getting uh, my brother like some spawn toys for Christmas one year. And like as soon as he opened up the package, like the character's leg fell off. Like, you know, they looked awesome. They were very detailed, but they were so cheap back then. And, uh, you know, you don't really have that problem with these Legends of the Dark Knight action figures. Spawn obviously won in the long run, but, you know. Uh, Legends of the Dark Knight did what they could during the time that they could. Um, obviously, there's a ton more toys for Spawn. And, uh, you know, even even the detail, there's still a, a whole lot more detail on those Spawn toys than there are in these Legends of the Dark Knight figures. But, you know, like I said, I still think they're totally worth having. You, you definitely should pick them up. All right, so first we're going to talk about Series 1. And even just showing Series 1 is, is tough because look look how gigantic these guys are. And look... I have to zoom all out and all this kind of stuff. It's just, it's tough trying to get a good shot of all these guys together um, in a way that's big enough on camera that doesn't make them look too small, you know? So, um, you know, what's the deal with Legends of the Dark Knight? What is this Batman Elseworld story? Well, I'll tell you. On the back of the cards, it says, From a horrible nightmare, Batman awakens to a twisted, parallel world where the criminals are in total tyrannical, tyrannical control, in this apocalyptic vision of Gotham City, the villains are unimaginably deadly, and the Dark Knight finds himself surrounded. To fight back and regain control, he develops neural suit technology that acts as an integral part of his being, tapping into his thoughts and impulses and automatically reacting to danger without hesitation. Now, Batman becomes a living, breathing weapon, and his adventures become legends of the Dark Knight. Wow, pretty cool. Uh, you know... Like, I paid a little attention to the story, but I didn't really care that much. The The most thing I cared about was just how awesome these guys look. And like I said, you know, they are very 90s. I get that. But I love that. I lived in the 90s, and I liked it. So, you know, I like these things. I think they're cool. I love all the sharp, pointed parts on them. I like how they actually look like they're, you know, they'd, they'd really rough the other person up or do some damage. I mean, look at the scythe for Scarecrow. Like, that looks like that shred you to pieces. Even Batman here has got these giant blades. Um, you know, it's it's it, I, like I like this stuff. I think it's very cool. So I'm going to break this down into bit by bit. First, we're going to talk about Series 1 and also the uh, the Skywing Street Bike that is a part of Series 1. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to talk about each figure move down the line here. All right. So for me, this is like the main Batman of the line here. Right? This is a Neural Claw Batman. And he's the main Batman because he's got Neural in his name. And the whole thing is about Neural technology or whatever. So, uh, you know, first off, what's the deal? What's, you know, what, what's, his, what, what's his story? With Neural suit powers that allow him to fly through the skies over Gotham City, Neural Claw Batman searches out the most horrific villains and finds them at every turn. These evildoers are huge and deadly, but are still no match for the capture grip cape and massive razor claws that instantaneously emerge from his suit attacking in battle or grasping onto ledges to halt Batman's descent. Pretty awesome. All right, so first up, I want to mention that I really like the color scheme of this guy. He's got like a bluish purple tint, you know, to the, the main suit. Then you have all these red highlights, the belt, the uh, the bat symbol, uh, the claws, inside the, the wings here, red. Like, 
the, the color scheme of this guy just looks fantastic. I, I really like how he looks. And um, it just like pops, you know, it's, it's one of the best of this line. And, uh, you know, he's pretty cool. You could remove the claws here. So he's just walking around. And, like, I just like the way that the the the, uh, the wings look on this guy. Like, he looks super imposing. Like, he looks... Like, if you were a criminal in Gotham, like, this guy would look frightening. Like, he would look like he would mess you up. He's, he's way scarier than Batman is usually. Maybe it's because he's got, like, these almost demonic-looking wings. So, yeah, you could take the claws off. And you can actually uh, pop the claws on the wings. Mine's really old and the, the joints are a little loose because I played with this thing even though I was in what? Sixth and, or seventh grade when I got this thing. I used to play with my brothers with them. So, you know, he got a lot of wear back then. And you can move the wings around. You can, you know, try to protect them with the wings. Or you could pretend that he's just, you know, attacking with the claws. You got a lot of cool possibilities here. Most of these uh, Batman face sculpts are pretty good, but there's something about this one that I like a little more than the others. Um, I don't know what it is. I'll have to try to figure it out as I'm looking at these guys. I like how he have this little tiny, like, uh, ridge going down the middle of his mask. It kind of reminds me of, like, the zipper on Bane's mask a little bit. Um, the belt's cool. I like how on the boots here, there's lots of bits and pieces to try to make them look mechanical. Uh, the wings look almost organic, but they're also a mixture of technology, so they're very biomechanical looking, <laughs> you know. Um, they're very cool. And the like I said before, the red looks very nice on them too. And like, you know, this is still early... This is early toys, so you're not going crazy with articulation. You only have, what, five points, really, for the body. Uh, two in the hip, two shoulder points, the neck point. There's not even a, a swivel in the waist or anything like that. And then you can move the wings around. Uh, the wings pop off pretty easily. So, you know, that's pretty good for storage. And that's it. Look at that. You got some nice little details on the back. I always like when you like remove like a cape or something like that and you find a little bit of extra detail that you didn't even know existed there. That's always pretty neat. But yeah, this was the first figure I picked up from this line and uh, I loved it. I thought it was great. And then uh, not not too long after that, I picked up my first villain, which was the uh, the Scarecrow. So since we talked about the first figure I picked up, we might as well talk about the second one. Let's talk about the Twister Strike Scarecrow. And what's uh, Twister, <laughs> Twister Strike Scarecrow's story? A nightmarish vision of evil with haunted glowing eyes, Twister Strike Scarecrow rises like a hideous ghostly apparition and launches his reign of terror. He clears a path of destruction with his deadly scythe slash attack that cuts down all who stand in his way. All except for Batman, who stands determined to end the tyranny. Um, you know, when I first saw this figure, I was like amazed and taken aback at how awesome it looked. Like I loved all the, the crazy detail on him and he just looked huge and he looked like super evil. Like he would, you know, totally mess Batman up. Uh, very different from all the other scarecrows I had seen before, because before this, what you only see, I would only have seen, uh, scarecrow in nightfall and uh, scarecrow on the animated series. And, you know, he looks far more imposing than them. And even when compared to Batman in this line, like, he towers over him. He's gigantic. So, you know, I, I really like this guy. I think he's really cool. And uh, let's take a closer look here. All right, so if we take a closer look at this guy, I mean, look look at all this detail. There's so many wrinkles on him. It just looks awesome. Like, his, his body looks like a mixture of straw and also kind of like muscle, like, especially like his arms up here. And it just looks awesome. Like, I really like it. You know, you have all these ripped pieces of, uh, you know, like the cloth outfit he would be wearing. Like, he almost like, you know, like he took a venom serum or something like that and, like, you know, outgrew his clothes that he had on or something. I like that he has, like, the two pieces of wood coming off of his shoulders. Like, he was hanging up in the middle of a cornfield and he came to life and, you know, is now on the hunt for fresh victims. His face is really awesome looking too. 
you know, he kind of has like this uh, new metal goatee and everything, but just the look of his face is awesome. And it kind of reminds me of like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre because it's like a face on top of his face underneath. And I don't know. He's got no nose and he, he just he's got long hair and he looks a little freaky. And, you know, I love this thing. I think it's great. He, he was very intimidating looking way back when. And, you know, just like Batman, he has very simple articulation. Uh, you're not able to rotate forward, which, which kind of stinks because you're only able to rotate on like this direction, which kind of stinks. I mean, obviously the purpose of it is for the action feature. But sometimes you want to be able to move this a little forward so you could try to get it to look more like he's, you know, able to attack Batman a little better than this. And, you know, you have the, the rotation down here at the hips. The head moves around. And, of course, like, you know, we'll get into the action feature right now, right? To make him do the twister strike scythe slash, uh, it's very easy. Even easier than trying to say it. You just, you lift him up like that. And now you're able to spin him around so he could hit Batman and Robin all at once. Um, so, you know, it's cool. It works well. But, you know, sometimes you want to get a little bit of, like, neater poses or have him be able to attack forward with this slife, scythe. The sculpt of his pants, you know, even that is really awesome. Like, there's so many wrinkles and creases on these things. They just look fantastic. They look like, you know, they're actually baggy and that they're, like, being... Uh, you know, squished up against his legs with this cool rope. And you know what? That's not even a rope. That's a, a barbed wire wrapped around his legs. So he's even cooler than you think. Like, I don't know. This is the amount of detail on this guy and his size and everything like that just makes him such an awesome figure to have. And, you know, you could mix him with any Batman line and have him just be like this giant uh, Venom scarecrow or something like that. And he also, he has another action feature, too. Where if you put a light behind his head, you can actually see his eyes glow. He's got like a little tiny uh, red piece back there. Pretty much just like a metal head from the Ninja Turtles. And you can do that. I think the scythe is pretty cool. I like that the blade has all these different uh, points on it. You know, that way when you're sticking into somebody, you're getting caught on their bone. And then you rip that bone out when you're an evil monster like the Scarecrow. Um, you know, these... These spikes down here are pretty cool. The only thing is that, uh, you know, if you look at the Scarecrow, the Scarecrow is like completely covered in so much detail. Like every single part on him is textured with his arms looking like muscles. You have like a bunch of cross hatching on his, uh, you know, his shoulders and his arms and his leg. Well, not his legs, but, you know, to try to make it look like a burlap sack or something like that. But unfortunately, the scythe is just very smooth. So it, even though it's a pretty cool looking weapon, it also seems a little, you know, out of place. Fitting the scythe in the hand is really easy. You just pop it in there and you're good, you know. It just sticks right in there. All right, up next we have Spline Cape Batman. And, uh, you know, much like Neural Claw Batman, this guy is pretty awesome too. You might think all these blades seem excessive, but I like that excessiveness. I think it's great. So, Spline Cape Batman says, Danger approaches from all directions at once. Spline Cape Batman is more than prepared for the onslaught, as his neural suit technology goes into action with its spiked assault cape, picking out each villain and striking with awesome accuracy. And, if Batman is weakened in battle, the wing sections automatically form a protective shell, shielding the Dark Knight from harm. So that's pretty cool. You know, makes sense. Spline Cape Batman, of course, has all these blades and, you know, just tons and tons of excessive detail. You may not like that. I think it's great. You know, I think it's really awesome that these sculptures really went, you know, out of their way to try to make these things as cool as possible. So you have like little like tabs and you have like all these little ridges and you have different spikes and you have these little tiny, I don't know if they're just like notches or they kind of, to me, they look like vents almost like all over the place. Um, even on the legs, there's a ton of detail in there. He's a little fuzzy because he's he's uh, he's dusty from being on my shelf for like 25 years. <laughs> so, um, but he's just he's really cool looking. And you know, it says on the card about like being able to protect himself with like the spline cape, but you can't really wrap this around him. Like 
it these pieces they can rotate this direction but they're not going to be able to wrap really around them it's not like the wings where you can kind of put that in front of them on a uh, neural claw batman um this guy he's just got these things and like you can remove these i just don't ever take them off because you know i don't want to mess them up and uh, there is some extra nice detail on here though like you can see the back of the belt has some detail and you kind of have like this covering of the spine and it goes all the way up to the back of his head so that's really great like this thing is just like i said just covered in awesome detail you have these cool claws and you can take the claws off very easily and pop them on if you want to also you know you got i don't know what do you call these things like these blades coming off batman's uh gauntlets but the these blades on these figures are like huge just like his ears are huge so, I don't know. All that stuff is great. I think it's, you know, this guy is really cool. I like the color scheme. I like the gold and the silver and the black and then the red on the, the spline pieces. I don't know. Like, what can you say? Like, I, I, I like Neural Claw Batman more than Spline Cape Batman, but I don't know. Both of them are really awesome. I do like the, uh, like I said, the, the fate, the head sculpts more on Neural Claw Batman, uh, but this one's cool too. I like the extra little bits of detail here. How they kind of like you know cut the head out into different shapes to try to make it look like he has more like a more of like an armor type of uh cowl than the uh the other figure but yeah it's just he's pretty awesome too and when i was a kid you know i'd pretend i'd play with both of them you know when i'd be playing with my brothers and i would have neuro claw batman he would be uh bruce wayne and then I would just pretend that this Batman was Azrael because, you know, he's got all the spikes all over his gut body. He's got the claws like Azrael has. There you go. That's make-believe for you. You got to use your imagination back then. The claws are neat, you know. There's nothing too uh, overly detailed about them. But they work. And they're nice. Up next, we have Assault Gauntlet Batman. And uh, since an ev sensing an evil threat, Assault Gauntlet Batman's neural suit reacts with neural uh, pumped power, tremendously increasing his strength and size to take on even the biggest, baddest villain. To finish off the job, the suit materializes power gloves with spike strike missiles uh, that blast off and cut through any criminal's stronghold. Um, this guy's pretty cool, but he is also kind of my least favorite of all of these, uh, Legends of the Dark Knight figures. I never had this guy when I was a kid, but my brother had him, and for whatever reason, I just never felt like picking him up. I don't know why. I don't know if it's partially because he's very stiff looking, like, he, he just stands straight up. Um, he's not very dynamic, and, uh, you know, the color scheme isn't the most exciting. It's just red, yellow, and black, um... Like, the detail on him actually looks pretty cool. Like, like look how jacked he is, man. Look at his muscles. They're huge. They're gigantic, right? So that's all cool. And, uh, you know, you have all these little kind of vents and stuff like that. You know, extra little uh, bits and pieces here and there that look fine. You know, the, the back of the cape is actually pretty cool. And the cape is removable. You just pop it off and pop it on. It's very simple. Um... You know, it's fine. It's just not my favorite. It's kind of almost kind of boring compared to the other ones. And he does have a, an action feature where he just shoots these spikes. So in series one, out of the three Batman's, like, well, the standard Batman figures, not the one that comes with the, uh, the Skywing uh, street bike, you know, I would have to say that the Neural Suit, the Neural Claw one is my favorite. Spine would be second. And then last would be the Assault Gauntlet Batman. Up next we have Dive Claw Robin. Dive Claw Robin locks onto Batman's neural suit technology, using it to turn his cape into enormous power glide wings that allow him to track down Gotham City's most horrific evildoers in relentless pursuit. When he's got them concerned, he launches his blast attack missile, sending it hurtling with excessive force. All right. So, uh, uh, unlike the, all the other figures, Robin actually has a variant. You know, this one was first, uh, I had this first, and then later on, you know, either the next year or a couple months later, I remember seeing this in stores and my brother eventually got it. And then eventually 
I got it. So now I have a dose. Um, so, you know, what's the big difference here? Well, uh, that's red on the original one. <laughs> the new one has the R on the chest. He's got a, a different uh, colored eye mask, and he has different colored hair. Other than that, I'm pretty sure everything is exactly the same. Uh, same color scheme for the, the wings and the suit, other than that belt and the, those other little points. So mostly we're just going to talk about this one. You know, this Robin is actually pretty cool. I like this guy a lot. I like the color scheme a lot, too, because they still kept that red and green from Robin's suit, and even the yellow from the wing, or the, the cape, and turned it into these wings. And, uh, you know, he looks... He's very Christmassy. I like that. <laughs> uh, you have this blade on the arm for when you want to punch the bad guys in the face. Um, you know, that just pops on there very easily. You know. Um, and the wings are just kind of kept on... Well, the wings are kept in place with this little extra bit here. And this is the... Uh, you know, the, the thing you're supposed to shoot at the bad guys. You have these little triggers here on the side, and you just push them down, and it'll shoot that. But you can actually keep the wings in place without that being in there. It's just, you know, pop it off, pop it on. There's a little hole here and a little peg there. But... Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, and look look at all the detail on this. Like, I love the detail on the wings. Um, I just love the way his suit is cut out into little um, shapes. I think that's really cool. They actually made Robin look tough. I mean, look at his face. He doesn't look like no, like, pesky brat Robin. He actually looks like a, a uh, you know, a force to be reckoned with. And, uh, you know... This is like one of those things too, just like Batman, where like I had this one and my brother had the other one. So he'd be like, okay, well this one's Dick Grayson and uh, you know, this one is Tim Drake. He's got the black hair, he's got the cool R on the, the chest here. And that looks neat. They messed this up though, apparently. Like the paint is look, looks off there. Um, but yeah, like I said, same exact detail. Nothing really different. 97. Yeah, same uh, stamp and everything on them. And that's that. And last from Series 1, we have Lethal Impact Bane. He thrives on scorpion venom, pumped directly into his twisted brain, finding incredible power in this lethal potion that would instantly kill any other living being. As Lethal Impact Bane metabolizes the poison, his body gains immense bulk and strength, and his mind grows ever more evil. Batman must overcome his massive venom-powered punch in order to conquer Bane and protect the people of Gotham City. Very nice. And, you know, uh, uh, you know, I gotta apologize, too, for all the fuzziness. There are the fuzzies on these guys. I tried to dust them, but, you know, like I said, I love this line so much. I've, I've literally have, I've had these toys on display since the 90s. Here's a close-up look at Bane, and, you know, I love the face on this Bane. I think it looks great. I love the, the bulk of them. I love the little extra wires that are going around his body. You have these ones going from his neck all the way down the back, and you have these ones that go on the side, except these ones are not painted on the insides of the arms, which is, you know, it's always kind of a little weird. But I just like, I love how they come down. They wrap around the legs. They go all over the place. It's like the venom is not only just going into his brain, but it's like going all over his body. Um, and you just have, like, the usual, like, Bane bits and pieces like you have this uh uh band around his arm here you have kind of like the uh the muscle shirt and like i said the face looks awesome you i think maybe one thing that's a little maybe not everybody likes as much as like this giant mane of hair he has um i think it's fine uh th the wires do get a little annoying though because like these ones are you can take them out and sometimes they just pop out by themselves which is you know annoying um, so he, you can't move his head at all, but you can twist his waist. Um, his arms have one point of articulation here. This one moves up and down, but you're not going to be able to do too much with it because it, of course, is part of his action feature. You have a button on the back of him here, so you can, you know, make him punch Batman. Um, 
And yeah, like just the muscle definition looks awesome on this guy. Um, even like the boots and stuff like that, they all look really nice. He's got like very cool uh, wrestling boots on. He's got cool little knee pads on. You know, this guy's just awesome. I, I even like all the detail and this extra hand, like this uh, this spiked glove that he has. And this kind of like goes in weird. He like holds it in his hand, but it also wraps around his hand. So let's see if I can pop that out of there. Not easily. I'm just not doing it. I know what's going to happen. It's like I'm trying going to try to take this out and then like his his tubes will start coming out. I don't know. Oh my gosh. All right, there we go. So you can have it. And you look at that. He even has like little tiny like Bane faces on his on his uh his gloves. You know, that's cool. Um what did I want to say? Oh yeah. I really like how he has like these uh scratches on his chest too from getting cut from Batman. Like, that's awesome. There's a lot of awesome detail on this guy. And, you know, he's still one of my favorite Bane toys of all time. Uh, other than, like, who else, who tops this? Maybe DC Universe Classics Bane. Other than that, like, he's probably my favorite. And now we have the final bit of uh, Series 1, the vehicle, Skywing Street Bike. Uh, not the coolest name, but... This thing is awesome. Like, I, I love the way that this thing looks. And you can still get this very cheap uh, mint in box sealed on eBay. You could probably get it for like 25 bucks. I think I got mine even cheaper than that when I got it like three years ago. Because um, I, I didn't have this for a really long time. When, uh, my brother had this and I did not. So <laughs> now I finally have my own. But uh, it, it's very cool. I like this thing a lot. With more at stake, Batman must retaliate. With his most aggressive vehicle yet, equipped with his neural suit technology, he develops the mighty dual personality Skywing Straight Bike. With a, with a powerful burst of wings, he converts from a ground cycle to an air assault vehicle with relentless nose-mounted rocket attack. So like I said, it converts from a bike to an air assault vehicle. How do you do that? Well, there's a button right here, and you push that, and the wings pop up. Well. There you go. Now you got both wings pop up, and now he looks like he's flying through the sky after his enemies. Um, and, like, the detail on this thing is just great, but I'll, I'll try to show closer detail in a minute. But first, like I said, I just want to show him actually on the bike. And, uh, you know, you have this uh, missile projectile here. All you got to do is uh, you put the, the projectile in there, and you open up the mouth, and it fires. Pretty cool. This Batman is made specifically for this bike, uh, so pretty much only he will, he will fit on it. And, uh, you know, you just put him in there and his feet will rest down here. And you can move the, uh, the handlebars to match where his hands are. Okay, so first off, I want to say that I really like how this thing, too, looks like a mixture of, uh, uh, like, organic material and mechanical material. Like, it looks like you have, like, the, the bat legs here. It's got a little bit of a body, then down here you have the head, then you have all these little extra bits and pieces of, uh, you know, mechanical parts on top of the face, around the nose where the, the projectile goes. Now this projectile is kind of annoying too when you're trying to figure out how to get this in here. Sometimes it's, it doesn't click in place right, and I don't, sometimes you get it right off the bat, and then other times you gotta mess around with it. Oh, see that? That's a problem too. Come on. I don't know what's going on here. So yeah, it's a... Nope. I don't know. Fine, whatever. Don't work. So, uh, it does go in there, I promise. So the, the teeth and stuff like that look pretty cool too on it. And, uh, you know, I really like down here, I gotta keep on adjusting this light here. You know, you have this very cool uh, looking motor down here inside there. Uh, you have this little bit here, that's just so, so you can push the wing down and stick it in there. Even the wing has some really cool detail on it. Um, in here and, you know, just 
like I said, just a, a, a mix of different things all clashing together pretty nicely. The only thing that you might think is weird is the bright yellow weight uh, tires. Like, why would they make the wheels so bright yellow? You'd think maybe it would be black or something like that, but whatever. I guess it's just a highlight. But, I don't know. That's the only thing to me that doesn't fit the best with the rest. Um, you have a kickstand, which works very easy, uh, simple. Um, you got the button up here. And then you just have the, the yellow, the bright yellow handlebars. Um, but like I said, it is a very cool vehicle. It is very cheap, like I said, on eBay. So you could easily pick this up if you want it. And uh, let's take a look at Batman. All right, so this Batman is very limited because look at his hands. He can only do one thing. Uh, either pretend like he's going to strangle you or, uh, you know, sit down on the, uh, the, the street bike. I really like how, like, you might think, it, like, again, with him, you might think it's excessive, but there's lots of little tiny bat symbols all around him, like on his hips. You have some bat symbols, which are kind of cool looking. You got a bat symbol on his cod piece. You got a bat symbol up here. You got a bat symbol that goes in the middle of his forehead and then becomes the ears. You know, that's that's pretty funny. And then you have the, the bat symbol on the hands. Uh, they're all over the place. But I, I, I do like, like, just the design of this thing, how you have all these little straps and stuff like that. It just looks cool, and the the silver mixed with the black really makes this guy, you know, just pop. He looks very cool, but like I said, uh, unfortunately, you're only going to have him on that bike, and that's it. The enemies in the first series are pretty tall, and their legs are pretty, you know, I mean, kind of thin. You know, it's not like a big bulky area you're shooting at, so unfortunately... You have to be a pretty good shot with this snot rocket and hit them either in the knees or, you know, aim up. Maybe if you're in air and you're shooting down at them, you might be able to uh, hit them easier. But, you know, right now it's not the best. And how much power is in there? <laughs> so that just, I guess it shot upward into his face. But, uh, yeah, it, I, don't, I don't think that's going to knock them over. It probably might knock over Scarecrow. Okay, so I figured I'd take a look and see how the uh, the Wave 1 Batman compared to all the other Batmans in the Wave. Originally, I wanted to have every single, you know, go over every single toy in this line all in one video. But if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I talk a lot and <laughs> things start to, you know, get bigger and bigger. And then I just have to make different parts. So I'm going to split this thing up from, you know, Series 1, Series 2, Series 3, Series 4. So 2, 3, and 4 should be relatively short compared to this one because I won't be going into the history of you know how we got to legends of the dark knight and I won't be going won't be covering as many figures because from here on out uh waves 2 3 and 4 or you know they they're just like four figures a piece so you know things will be trimmed down a bit but uh I do want to say this that um from start to finish they kept batman pretty consistent uh like his uh like his proportions uh his 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 muscle mass you know they're all pretty similar uh, except for this uh, gauntlet Batman, but he's supposed to be really strong because that was a part of his thing was that he was supposed to get all buffed up. Uh, this guy looks like he might be the tallest, but he might be, this guy might be the tallest. This, um, I think it's Dark Detective Batman. I have to, I'm showing my, yeah, no, Batman the Dark Knight, so... He is the tallest, but, you know, I can't wait to, to talk about this guy in part four because, in my opinion, this is one of the coolest Batmans ever. And, you know, he doesn't, you know, if you just want a very cool stylized, because, I mean, like, look at this cape. That looks just like, like a Kelly Jones kind of design. You know, this is like your perfect Batman for that purpose. Or, you know, at the time when Kelly Jones took over, he had changed Batman's design and gave him this, like, all black suit. So, you know, when I get to it, I'll get to it. And in part four, I'll talk about them and compare them to the cartoon or the, the comic book a little bit. But, you know, I, like I said, I love this series, so I can't wait to talk. And now that we're done with Batman, here's a quick look at Robin from the beginning of the line to the last toy he had. He only had one other figure in series three. Um, and proportionately, things look pretty close, like his torso, his legs, his arms. The only thing that in person is kind of noticeable is the face looks a little smaller. 
you know, you have this mask on here, so maybe they had to shrink down the the face a little bit. Yeah, that definitely looks smaller than the uh, the original Robin. But we'll talk about more on him later. Only one other good guy made an appearance in this line, and that was Batgirl. And I assume that Batgirl distracts the bad guys while Batman and Robin pound on them, because here, obviously, they, they've tried to turn Batgirl into a, a bad girl. Here are all the villains in the line, and, you know, just trying to show all these villains in one shot is, like, next to impossible, unless, you you know, you want the picture to be very, very small, because all these guys are gigantic, and, you know... This uh, this was like probably the biggest selling point for me was just these giant monster looking villains like, you know, I love Batman. But once I saw Scarecrow and Bane, I was like, yes, this is amazing. This is what I want because you always want your villains to be, you know, bigger and um, threatening than more threatening than the hero. And these guys definitely do that. I mean, these guys look like, you know, you'd move out of Gotham City as soon as one of these guys popped up, except for Catwoman. She's just kind of. She's okay. But the other, the other guys are just awesome, and there's so much detail on most of them. And, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to talk about uh, more of these guys in the future on uh, the next three episodes. You know, the only, the only negative I have with this line, uh, like the biggest negative for me, is, the, uh, is that there just aren't enough villains in this line. And, you know, like, like I wish there was more. Like, like I said, Mr. Freeze would be awesome in this line. Uh, Black Mask, you know, even like people like Firefly, like I would love to see him done in this design. Um, so like the only thing that I do with this is that uh, I kind of use a, a Hush Poison Ivy because she is roughly the same height as Catwoman. So I kind of display her with the villains in this set. And, uh, you know, forever since I got, you know, since, since I found it on the internet, I've always wanted to do this with a, 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 a Spawn Creech figure. Like, I found this way back when I was in college, so in, like, 2002, on this uh, ironcow.com, but this guy turned uh, a Spawn Creech figure into a Mr. Freeze, and, like, I've wanted to do this for, like, almost 20 years now, uh, and I haven't done it, but, you know, it would be awesome, because, you know, this line could, could use more villains, uh, check out that website. It's pretty cool. He's, he even has some um, uh, a custom Two-Face and some other figures, and it, it's great. Real quick, too, I got to show how Batman fits in with these guys. Obviously, he doesn't stand a chance. I mean, they, they, pretty much all of them, except for the Penguin Tower over him, and the Penguin is just, like, you know, big and bulky. So, you know, he's dead meat. And that's all for Series 1. And uh, next time I'll talk about Series 2, and I'll even be able to talk a little bit about the... Uh, the Toy Fair mail away variants of Series 2, which were pretty cool, but I don't have. So. Um, I will say this, that, uh, you know, as much as I love these figures, like, your posing is very limited due to the action poses that they're sculpted in. So, you know, taking a bunch of action shots of these guys gets a little repetitive. There's, there's only so much you can do with them. Um, but, you know, that's how it is. So, check out the, uh, the next episode... Same bat time, same bat channel.